Oliver in Brazil. Uh, how you doing? You're on with Dr. Daryl Ray. Hi, Daryl, and how my Matt, how are you doing today? Good, Oliver. Good. Thanks. So, um, I, I I told the person who attended me on the on the call that I was in a transition, being being an atheist and an atheist, and uh, one of the things that really makes that complicated. I think that conceptually, I already consider myself an atheist, but I think that certain emotional bonds, uh, like uh, community in the church, being born and raised, and, uh, you know, uh, certain topics which are still hard for me to um, accept in a way. And and this is the particular topic that, I, that I'd like to know your opinion about and maybe have some advice, which is how, how do you, I know at least Matt uh, was a a uh, Christian um, before uh, becoming an atheist. And so I'd like to know, how, how do you cope emotionally with the idea of, like, you, you've, you've been expected like a Christian, and, and especially me, like, a, I was a Mormon uh, for a long time, like, since I was born. Oh. So you don't have, like, just the idea of heaven and hell, but you have, like, all those degrees in heaven. And, you know, you, you probably know all about that. And, and so it's very hard to imagine that, like, Obviously, like uh, intellectually, I don't see any more any sufficient evidence to agree with that. But it's too hard. I, I think you get what I'm saying. It's too hard emotionally to to imagine like, okay, that that's going to be it. And you know, at most, I can live maybe more sixty or seventy years, and then I'll be no more. <laughs> so, to say. so maybe I'd like to know your thoughts about it. Maybe share some advice with me about it. How to cope with that. Well, I'm going to say the same thing I said to the previous two callers that, that we talked to. Um, congratulations. Getting out of Mormonism can be very difficult. And you're absolutely right. The community piece of Mormonism probably emphasizes community almost more than any other single Christian uh, religion or cult. And so you, you've done a lot of work to get there. Uh I don't know if you were listening earlier when I talked to um I'm forgetting her name now uh, that Lexi Lexi when when yeah. she was you know when I was talking about learning English and learning the religion you were learning your language and you were learning Mormonism probably at the same time and that gets it's like the Jesuits said give me a give me the boy till 7 and I'll give you the man have you heard that before no, I'm not familiar with you. Okay, uh, Jesuits for 400 years have used this uh, approach. Give me the boy till seven and I'll give you the man. Basically what they're saying is I, if you can give me a, a child and let me brainwash them until they're seven years old, I can emotionally bind them to the Catholic religion. And that's what the Mormons have done as well. They can emotionally bind you. And we hear this from Jehovah's Witnesses. We hear it from Catholics. We hear it from Buddhists and, and Hindus. It doesn't matter what religion, Islam uh, as well. Whatever you were raised in as a child, your brain, uh, are you familiar with uh, the concept of imprinting, Oliver? Have you ever heard of that in biology, imprinting? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, what's happening in the human brain, it's just like it happens in a duck brain or a goose brain, is there's imprinting on of certain things. And Mormonism imprinted on you. The kid, the kid in the next continent over got imprinted with Hinduism. The kid in the next country over got imprinted with Mormonism. It's, it's literally stamping your brain with a certain ideology. So you can get out of that ideology. You're not destined to be trapped by it, but it takes some work. And I would suggest it takes something that we call in psychology, we call exposure therapy. And that is to expose yourself and and then and then debunk the ideas. One way to do that is to go expose yourself to um, Baptists, go expose yourself to Islam, and listen to all these different stories and compare them to how you were raised. Two things are, I'll guarantee you. Two things are going to happen. Number one is you'll you, a light bulb will come on in your head. Probably you say, "Wow, they were brainwashed the same way I was, but it's a different religion." The second thing is going to happen is your brain will get used to the notion that you're not bound to that ideology. So your brain will slowly but surely start letting go. 
Now, you're never going to let go of it completely, probably, but you'll start letting go of it little by little. In fact, I'm going to guess already, Oliver, that you've let go of some of it. It's not nearly as bad as it was, say, a year ago or two years ago, but I may be wrong on that. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, well, right. Uh, like, over time, one thing that really helped me was uh, studying science. And, uh, like, I'm in, on physics grad school, and so Good. the idea of, like, you know, the scientific method and start like opening my eyes and seeing that like, okay, I can apply it to everything that we know to be true, but not to many of the things that I was taught about in religion. And so that kind of really bothered me for a long time. And then like, as you said, like from one, two years uh, ago until now, I've been like trying to act, not just being bothered and forgetting about it, but really trying to act and, and about it, you know. That's excellent. You're you're right on target. That's exactly the way to, to approach this. I would suggest going one step further, and that is there's a couple really good, well, there's more than that. There's probably half a dozen really good books on mindfulness. If, if, um, if you get on Amazon or something, you grab a book on mindfulness and learn some mindfulness techniques. And here's the way you use them for what your your concern is, Oliver. You learn the mindfulness techniques. What the mindfulness does is helps you relax and let these intrusive thoughts come through and move on through. What what you're probably experiencing is intrusive thoughts that are directly related to your your childhood indoctrination. Am I correct? Yeah probably that so just like this difficulty in accepting the idea that like I was always taught and truly believed for a long time like I, I was even a missionary for the church and so on so I used to teach people that like uh, if you do everything all right you'd be able to like to you know win this uh, greatest of rewards and so on <laughs> and so now the idea that no it's just like here and now and I have to do the most I can about it yeah this is this, you know it's, it's difficult sometimes to accept and I hear I hear two things. One, and I, and I'm just guessing on on this one. I hear maybe you're some you have you experience some guilt about having led other people into this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we hear that a lot. We we have ministers come to us and say, "I just feel so guilty because I I baptized all these people." I hear Mormons saying the same thing. They, of course, you baptize all sorts of people in Mormonism. So that's that's number one. I think you're. You're you're moving in the right direction. It's kind of like what Matt said a little bit earlier. If you're asking the question, then I'm confident you're going to make it through. Because just asking the question, questions are the most important things in your life. And so if you're asking the question, you are on the right track. Second thing I want to say is that the second thing I hear you saying is you're having, you're coming to grips. You're trying to come to grips with your own mortality. You're trying to come to grips with the fact that you are not going to exist someday. And that's, that is the, that is the task. That is the program of religion to prevent us from coming to grips with that task. As seculars, as somebody who doesn't have a Mormon faith behind them or a Baptist faith or a Muslim faith, you have to come to grips with the basic biology. We're animals, we're going to die. And to me, I think that is one of the most important tasks of your life. It's coming to the fact, coming to the grips with the notion that you won't exist someday. And so what that does is it tells it tells you, I'm going to do as much as I possibly can while I'm still alive. It's the only life I got. I'm going to make the most of it. But you got to get over the other previous programming before you can really come to grips with that. Yeah. The, the way I've kind of explained it in the past is that if somebody told me I was going to be a millionaire at 40, like I was just going to inherit a million dollars at 40. And then when I got to be 40, I found out that was a lie. I could spend the next 10 or 20 years being mad about it, about worrying about it and everything else. Um, but all that would do is ruin those years in the same way that the, ruin, the years leading up to that were ruined. And so for me, coming to the grips that this is the one and only life that I know I'm going to get, any other life is a bonus, then it just became instantly obvious. Oh, I'm going to live this life the way I want to, the way that you know is most appealing to me. I'm not saying it's easy, but for me, it was almost that easy. It was when I realized, oh, this afterlife thing isn't likely to be true. 
I have no reason to think it's true. Um, it's kind of like the, the, the God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I can't change and the wisdom to know the difference type yeah. thing. Um, I just get to a point where I know there's nothing I can do about whether or not I'm going to get a life after this life. And it's silly of me to think I'm going to. And it's also kind of silly of me to think there's something I could do about it. Um, it's like, you know, the caller earlier who was, you know, oh, what are you going to do at the end of time when God tells you you didn't keep the faith? I'm going to say, yeah, because you didn't give enough evidence. Um, and if it turns out there's an afterlife, it's not like there's anything I can do about it. Chat in with us at Recover from Religion, uh, Oliver, and ask to join our community and or go on to Discord and join some of those communities. You'll find some community. I think part of what I hear is you'd like some more community. People support you and, and you can talk to. I hope that helped, Oliver. I got two more calls I want to get to. We're already past time, uh, but I appreciate your, your calling and uh, hopefully that was useful for you. Yeah, it was truly useful. Thank you very much. I'll probably watch it later again. Uh, just to take all the advices from Daryl again and, and fall on it, but it really helped. And I just want to say that, like I, to Matt, I'm, I, I've discovered the atheist experience by seeing your debate series in your YouTube channel. Yeah. And I've recommended uh, atheist experience to all my friends in, in grad school, and now I think all of them are addicted. Awesome. <laughs> well, hopefully I'll get to Brazil someday, but thanks a lot for the call, Oliver. I appreciate it. All right.